Good morning, fifth grade. We are going to continue with Esperanza Rising in Chapter 8 this morning. Before we get started, we want you to do this quick write. How was Esperanza's first day of work at the camp? What challenges did she face? So think back to yesterday when she was babysitting with Isabel and when she had to sweep the platform. Write three to four sentences. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to keep going. Our focus question for today is how does Esperanza continue to adapt to her life in the camp? How has she matured since the beginning of the novel? And when we're, when we're talking about adapting, it's how does she, you know, respond to challenge? Um, when you adapt to something when there's a challenge, how do you overcome it and continue to move on with your life? That's what it means to adapt. We have three vocabulary words. The first one is shrine. That's a structure or place devoted to a saint. Okay, so this is an example of a shrine and the saint, statue of the saint is in the middle. Um, the second one is accustomed. That's something... Um, that's like a routine that you have. If you're accustomed to doing something, you have a routine. So like I'm accustomed to drinking coffee every morning, right? And if I don't have it, um, whoo, a little grumpy, okay? So these, this picture of the back to school routines is an example of something you're accustomed to doing. And then the third one is trellis. And um, that's this um, wooden... It kind of looks like a fence, but it's not. It's um, a place where you can, like, grow, where, like, plants can grow up the wooden structure. So it's called a trellis. And so it's like some people build trellises and, you know, have their rose, roses grow on vines. And so if it's a plant that grows on a vine, it can grow up the trellis. Um, and it's really pretty in your yard or garden. All right, we're going to continue reading in Chapter 8. Turn to the first page of Chapter 8. Almonds is the name of the chapter. Las Almendras. I hope I said that right. And as we're reading, we're going to um, track feelings, actions, sayings, and thoughts for Esperanza. Ah, oh, my neck hurts, said Mama, as she massaged the back of her hand, head with her hand. It's not my neck, it's my arms that are sore, said Hortensia. It is the same for everyone, said Josefina. When you first start in the sheds, your body refuses to bend, but in time, you will get used to the work. Everyone had come home that night tired and with various aches and pains. They gathered in one cabin for dinner, so it was crowded and noisy. Josefina warmed a pot of beans, and Hortensia made fresh tortillas. Juan and Alfonso talked about the fields, while Miguel and Isabel played with the babies, making them squeal with laughter. Mama cooked arras, and Esperanza was surprised that Mama knew how to brown it first in oil with onions and peppers. Esperanza chopped tomates for a salad and hoped no one would mention the sweeping. She was glad this day was over. Her, her bruises had been to her pride. All right, so here's an action. She's, um, you know, chopping tomatoes for a salad, you know, doing her part to pitch in. Um, but she has a thought. She hopes no one, you know, talks about her sweeping. And she also has a feeling. She's glad the day is over because, you know, her pride is hurt. She was embarrassed and she's ready to move on. Isabel took a fresh tortilla, sprinkled it with salt, rolled it up like a cigar, and waved it at Miguel. How come you and Tio Alfonso won't let me go behind the cabin with you? Shh, he said, it's a surprise. Why are you so full of secrets, asked Esperanza. That's a saying. But neither Alfonso nor Miguel answered. They simply smiled while they prepared their plates. They ate dinner, but before they could slice a cantaloupe for dessert, Alfonso and Miguel disappeared, with instructions not to follow them. 
What are they doing? demanded Isabel. Hortensia shrugged as if she knew nothing. Miguel came back just before sunset. Senora and Esperanza, we have something to show you. Esperanza looked at Mama. It was obvious Mama was confused, was as confused as she was. Okay, so those are feelings. I think I put feelings in green. Let me double check. Yes, feelings are in green. Okay, so she looks at Mama, and they're both confused. They all followed Miguel to where Alfonso was waiting. Behind the cabin was an old oval washtub with one end cut off. It had been set on its side, forming a little shrine around a plastic statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Someone had built a grotto of rocks around the base of the tub. Around it, a large plot of earth had been fenced in by sticks and rope and planted with thorny stems, each with only a few branches. Yes, Isabel gasped. It's beautiful. Is that our statue? Josefina nodded. But the roses come from far away. Esperanza searched Miguel's face, hopeful. Papa's? Yes, they are your papa's roses, said Miguel, smiling at her. Alfonso had dug circles of earth around each plant, casitas, little houses, and made moats for deep watering, just like he had done in Aguas Calientes. But how? Esperanza remembered the rose garden as a blackened graveyard. Oh. After the fire, my father and I dug down to the roots. Many were still healthy. We carried the cuttings from Aguas Calientes. That's why we had to keep them wet. We think they will grow. In time, we will see how many bloom. Esperanza bent close to look at the stems rooted in mulch. They were leafless and shrubby, but lovingly planted. She remembered the night before the fire when she had last seen the roses and had wanted to ask Hortensia to make rosehip tea, but she'd never have the chance. Now, if they bloomed, she could drink the memories of the roses that had known Papa. She looked at Miguel, blinking back tears. Which one is yours? Miguel pointed to one. Which one is mine? He smiled and pointed to the one that was closest to the cabin wall and already had a makeshift trellis propped against it. So you can climb, he said. Mama walked up and down carefully, touching each cutting. She took Alfonso's hands in her own and kissed him on each cheek. Then she went to Miguel and did the same. Muchas gracias, she said. Mama looked at Esperanza. Didn't I tell you that Papa's heart would find us wherever we go? Ugh, it's so beautiful. Okay, we need to... <laughs> also, I realize this is chapter 7. <laughs> oh, yeah, I changed it to chapter 8. Okay. So we need to... I'm still recording. I'm still recording. <laughs> it's okay. So we need to go back and underline... We should have your past evidence underlined, so now you need to go back and record it. Um, let's... At first, Esperanza um, is feeling embarrassed because of what happened earlier on in the day. And then she's confused about why Miguel, you know, wants to show her something. Um, and then when she sees the roses, um, she is really grateful um, that she will have the chance to, um, to remember Papa and at each time she looks at the roses. All right, and so then her actions, she, you know, helps prepare dinner. She follows, you know, Miguel outside. Um, and she, you know, appreciates the roses. And then last, her sayings, you know, she asks Miguel, are these papas? And then she wants to know how he planted it, um, and she asked him, you know, which one is mine? And if you think back um, to earlier on in the book, there's a scene um, where she and Miguel are at 
the rose bushes and they each have a rose bush that was planted um, when they were born. Um, and he has been able to recover those. And so they can grow with the rose bushes. And then last, the thoughts. Um, we know that she's confused. Um, and then she, you know, thinks about the night of the fire and how when she saw the roses, they were, you know, she thought they were gone forever. Um, and now she's thinking about how she'll be able to remember Papa. Okay, press pause to fill out your four square and make sure you have quotes for each box. And then last, you have a paragraph. How does Esperanza respond to the rosebush? Why is the rosebush significant to Esperanza?